the roadmap and prioritization uh, process. So the idea here is to give you an idea of how the DHS2 roadmap, so the software development roadmap uh, is developed and prioritized. Um, and to talk a bit about how you can request feedback and provide input on the, the roadmap. Um, so a bit about how we're thinking from the University of Oslo side about the software development. Uh, so of course, DHS2 now used by a lot of countries. We're getting a lot of requests in my country. We're working on this project. We need this feature. We need to have the user interface slightly different. We need to be able to import data in a certain way, etc. cetera. Uh, so there is a lot of requests for features, functionality coming in. Uh, so managing this and coming up with a roadmap uh, is of course a complicated uh, sort of task. And the, the main thing there is that we're trying to look at sort of the specific requests, feature requirements coming in and trying to see if we can find generic ways of solving them so that those solutions can be used other places. Uh, so generic here is referring to um, making something that is uh, adaptable, flexible to be used for different purposes. So sort of from the beginning of the DHS2 development, uh, sort of the slogan of the development team has been generic solutions to local requirements. Uh, we're also, uh, uh, DHS2 is recognized as what we call a digital public good. This is a sort of global in initiative to identify software solutions that meet certain standards. Uh, for example, that they're relevant for the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, that they're open source, that there is a clear ownership, platform independence, that it is documented. It has mechanisms to extract the data being uh, managed, that it adheres to privacy um, laws and standards, uh, follows best practices, and do no harm by design. So some of this principle, if for those of you who are into open source software, it has a similar list of criteria specifically for open source. We do no harm, don't discriminate for different uses, et cetera. But this is, um, there is now a digital public goods alliance that is working to identify software solutions that meets, meet this uh, criteria. And DHS2 was one of the first ones to be uh, identify there. So a bit more specifically on how the roadmap process works. So the typical start uh, is around September of each year. Uh, we have this process where um, we invite some key stakeholders to present their main priorities for the coming releases. Uh, so this includes ministries of health. It means the HISP groups, which typically are the ones representing the Ministry of Health requirements in these uh, meetings. It's the team at the university who manage different DHS2 projects um, and the HISP UIO management who are sort of setting the more strategic direction of where we want to take uh, DHS2. So based on this, we have a team of product managers who are responsible for different parts of DHS2. So we have a product manager for mobile, for analytics, um, for the sort of overall platform and for tracker specifically. So this team sits down, looks at all the requirements coming in from the different stakeholders. And they try to sort of combine what, what requests are actually more or less the same, what can we combine into the same, um, same specification uh, and come up with one list of all the requirements coming in from, uh, from different places. Based on this, they produce a list, which is looking at the, how many people actually requested this, what is the level, effort, level of effort to implement this by the development team. And then we have a, a meeting again where um, the stakeholders can provide input again on this consolidated list of requirements. 
And of course, as you start, the development team starts working on features. They might re might realize that this is more f more uh, will take longer time than they planned, so they have to change things. Maybe there are some urgent things that pop up that needs to be added to the roadmap later. So there is often some adjustments to the prioritization uh, on the way. And in terms of how we try to prioritize uh, requests coming in, the first priority is the country implementations, ministries of health. Um, that's sort of our top goal. And then from the University of Oslo side, uh, we also sometimes have deliverables with global partners uh, to develop certain things. So those need to be high in the high in our prioritization because that's how we fund the whole development of DHIS2. Um, so it could be, for example, that we have a deliverable to make a toolkit that requires a certain software feature. Then we need to put that in the roadmap uh, so that we can um, meet that deliverable. Third on the list is more sort of the technical maintenance. Sometimes we need to introduce new frameworks uh, because old ones are uh, no longer supported. We need to make sure the basically maintenance of the source code of DHS2. And then on the fourth on the prioritization is sort of other requests coming in from um, people, organizations using DHS2 for other, uh, in other contexts, people just posting on the community of practice, for example. We also look at those and try to pick up feature requests that might make sense, uh, but they're of course prioritized lower than what we're getting sort of directly from ministries and um, that we have deliverables on. So this is this has been for the last few years the sort of the process. Uh, like I said, we have this annual prioritization once a year. Uh, it's been in September for the last few years, where we're then planning for the next uh, next two releases, typically. Um, and then the more detailed planning for the second release of the year is happening in March. And the actual releases are in April and October. Uh, sorry, the uh, September meeting is open for... Yeah, so for the September meeting, uh, yeah, so I, I don't remember exactly how, what sort of the process was last year, but I, I think a lot of it is through the HISP groups. So that we ask the HISPs to talk to the ministries that they support to sort of what are the, what are your priorities? And they try to compile that for the ministries that they work with. So it's coming through the HISPs. Uh, but then of course, from the University of Oslo side, we also work directly with some countries. So we have an idea of what the, what the priorities are also from the projects we are engaging in. But I think so for this region is of course something that we need to figure out how we do this. I just I'm, I'm thinking uh, loud that uh, uh, if something for that countries or the country context has, for example, like Palestine, large scale implementation, and they are um, in a position that <laughs> there is many features, uh, urgent feature, like for example, decision support system, uh, uh, multiple uh, advanced feature in the tracker. So just I'm thinking about, shall we put it on the community of practice in first, then go to the JIRA for make it uh, more visible for the developer uh, or channeled through the HESP or UIO. So we have uh, just in my mind, uh, I have several ways and channels to, to communicate. So if, what is the best way to do to do that? I have connection, for example, in, in Palestine, I have connection with all. Mm. But maybe the for me, it could be community of practice, then HESP, then waiting, yeah. or what type of process? Yeah. Uh, it's always good to make JIRA issues. I'll come back to JIRA. This is the system we use for actually collecting all the feature requests and defining the software features that are being developed. Uh, but I would say in general, it's important to not just make it add it to Jira. If it's something that's really important for your implementation, uh, 
you need to try to explain it to someone sort of more directly as well, <clears throat> because there are just so many things coming into Jira that it's difficult for the product team, the product managers to actually understand how important something is for an implementation. And of course, if it's a feature that is very important for a national implementation, we need to understand it so that they can be prioritized. But if it's just coming into Jira, it's not necessarily something that is picked up. But I think going forward, um, I think one way is through then uh, the HISP, so that when we have the next prioritization process, this region will be represented there, which it hasn't happened before, of course. And then, of course, if it's something urgent, so on the global team, we are also have like we are also inputting into this process, like myself and uh, my colleagues. So you can also always approach us and say this is really important for us. We're not people are not picking it up on Jira. So can you help us sort of promote this and then explain? We can try to explain why this is important. Uh, and of course, there are often things that we sort of personally, I think this should be higher on the roadmap, but I'm not always able to convince the people managing the software that this feature is important. We will uh, specify our list, the wish list mm -hmm. and the urgent list. Yeah. And we'll share it to Dr. Rahman and Hanin, sure. Yeah, no, so I think it's something, of course, there are, like I said, so many requests coming in. So including us in the in Oslo, we're not always uh, able to push for what we think is the most important. Uh, so it can be a frustrating uh, process, of course. What is new this year is that we're not doing two releases. So this year there will be a new release, I think next week. 2.40 and then uh, there won't be any new versions until uh, probably April next year. And the reason for this is uh, that the development team feel they have quite a big backlog of things um, they would like to sort out, uh, including upgrading old applications to new frameworks, etc. So a lot of sort of maintenance tasks uh and some bugs etc they want to prioritize rather than having a new release with new features uh this fall so this year there will only be one release i think next year they're still not 100 sure whether they will continue with just one release or they will do two releases but i think most likely it will from now on be just one release per year most likely but not confirmed after next year uh, one reason that they can reduce the number of releases per year is that we're moving towards what the what we call um, continuous release of the applications. So DHS2, it has the, of course, it's installed on the server, the main application, uh, and sort of the core functionality. But then, as you saw this week, we've showed a couple of examples of installing new apps from this app hub. Um, so what we're moving towards is that the sort of server backend side of the DHIS2 is getting uh, less frequent releases, but that the apps can be updated more frequently than uh, DHIS2 itself. So it's a bit similar to what you have on Android or uh, iPhone, big updates, maybe once a year. But your applications, Facebook and Google Calendar and all those things, they can be updated with new functionality more frequently. So it's the same thing we're moving towards with DHIS2. Fewer few releases of the core DHIS2, more frequent releases of the individual applications. So um, just a couple of quick things uh, at the end. We have uh, this web page, dhs2.org slash roadmap, which gives you an overview of what is currently being planned for the coming releases. Uh, so you can go there and then you can, um, you can look at what is being planned. And uh, yeah. you have these different filters here. So you can look at specifically for analytics, what are the new features for tracker for the Android application, etc. So that's where you can look at what is being planned. Um, 
for those who are following specific sort of functionality that is uh, has been reported and you want to track are people have people started working on it maybe you want to ask someone what is happening uh, we have this jira platform that we use for uh, specifying uh, software requests new functionality etc and assigning it to developers uh, you can communicate sort of specify the details uh, of features if the developers are asking etc uh, and this is also where you report uh, any bugs that you might find. Bugs, features, everything should be recorded here. And then in addition, you might have to follow up with someone to make sure they understand how important it is. Um, so I really uh, encourage you to have a look both at the, this roadmap uh, page, just to have an idea of what is uh, being developed, as well as making an account here and you can report things and uh, keep track of what is being done. Yeah, like I said, this is also where you can, if you report a feature, a developer has a question about this, the communication will happen here through the uh, through Jira. Okay, so to summarize, uh, so DHIS2 itself is being developed based on this roadmap process I've described, public roadmap process where we try to gather in uh, all requests, consolidate them, prioritize uh, with the ministry implementations being the, the top priority. Uh, you can follow the roadmap, um, what has been sort of picked up for the roadmap on this webpage, uh, dhis2.org slash roadmap. And if you have feature requests or want to report a bug, uh, you do this through Jira. Any questions before I give the word to Anna? Uh, just maybe a, a question about the management part uh, or decision support system. So do you have anything, uh, or do you have any thought about that for the future to, to be part of the core DHIS2? Because- mean the functionality for- As a decision support system, part of the functionality. Not only the, you know, the, the program rule, you can make right widget mm. about the feedback, but we need the care provider to have a section for management to improve the quality of care. So, uh, maybe I un understand previously that it will be part of the coming release, but I don't know if you have an idea about the if it's this no. year, next year. No, not really. Uh, uh, how, how we can make it a priority on the agenda? Uh, I think you need to then compete with all the other things people want for the... What if the we track. put a JIRA and do voting on that and make it... Yeah, no, so I, I think it's good to have that kind of uh, that you really make sure that Mike, as a tracker product manager, understands the yeah that it's the totally, top priority yes. for you, and he's supporting that totally. Mm. But I think, like the uh, like I said, there are so many sort of backlog of things we would like to do before we start working on new things, sort of improving performance on some of the program indicators, for example. So I think. Um, that's one reason for slowing down with just one release is to do the maintenance, do the performance uh, improvements, et cetera, before so, working on the new. So we will have a bilateral meeting with Mike. Maybe we can activate this issue more. Yep, mm. thank you. <laughs> Any other uh, questions or comments? Uh, since it's an open source, I'm, I'm asking, is there any dif different branches from DHS2 or it's all being done by Oslo University? Uh, for example, if I need to pay, if I need to do a country specific thing, not available in DHS2, but using DHS2, can I like hire a company, uh, use the code, do our own development without referring to Oslo? Uh, yeah, thank you. You can, and people have done it, and it's usually not gone well, because you end up with a, your own branch, and then after two years, you realize it's very expensive to merge all the new things being developed in the main branch into your branch. 
So I think uh, many countries have done it and all of them have stopped because it's just not sustainable in the long run. But nice. technically it's possible. The source code is there and you can take it and do it. But th that's also the reason we have the app, app, uh, app Hub. Because the idea now is that to avoid having to make a fork of the DHIS2 itself, you can get the company to make an app that runs on DHIS2 with the functionality you need. And then you just need to maintain that app and use the main core DHIS2. That so that's uh, that's what we encourage rather than making a copy of DHIS2 itself. You make an app that runs within DHIS2 and then what you need to do is just to make sure that that just that app is uh, maintained over time. Paying for that app only. Okay. Thank you. So that was actually the sort of the main reason for making support for apps was to avoid uh, avoid having these forks because they're they're very hard to maintain in the long run. Other uh, questions, comments? Maybe just a comment on, on this because this is an important point. Uh, so to work on the source code directly, like a fork product, this is not recommended at all. Just uh, you will lose the support from UIO and the regular release unless you do an app, like he mentioned. The application is um, compatible if you do it in a way that compatible with DHIS2. But if you have like a fork product, uh, where uh, uh, if you play with or work with the source code, it's gonna be uh, painful for you in the future. So that's uh, it's good to have like uh, the standard DHIS2 rather than work on the source code, unless you have a capacity and uh, resources to do application inside the DHIS2. Thank you. Okay. Then I uh, give the floor to Anna. Uh, 